Hello. Oh, this will be the fake fourth episode. How y'all doing? Titties. Yeah. Mm. A shizzle. What's up? A shizzle. I can't respond to that as I am uh, melanin deficient. <laughs> so, Cody, tell me how you feel about. Uh, Give me some. Biden. Old man Biden. Well, um, I. Uh, <laughs> I think it, it, it's just he it is establishment politics in a nutshell, right? Mm -hmm. He is corrupt as all get out. His sons are corrupt as all get out. You know, he likes to claim he's Scrant, you know, Joe from Scranton. I grew up in middle class, but then somehow he and his entire family have gotten more and more enriched as his political career has gone on. And then also, oh, yeah. let's, you know, everybody likes to easily forget how many times he has just regularly lied, like the whole plagiarism thing. Like, and, you know, sure, like Trump is such a, well, he's Trump. Uh, so let's, mm -hmm. that's kind of hard, but it's very diff. Like, it, in reality, it, it's very difficult to look at Trump and go, oh, he's, you know, and, and really have complaints outside of, oh, he's just a boorish oaf. You know, because mm -hmm. even when you when you talk to people online on Facebook, that's that's all they really are like, oh my god, no. He says me no no words. And, and you know, like, all right, you know, you can hit him on economic policy. You can argue about the trade wars with China. Now I I personally have been pro let's do a trade war with China for you know longer than i've been politically active so i i would look at you and go oh no um maybe you should try and find a way to make money other than selling stuff to genocidal maniacs the but, china i feel you china. but you just you look at and this and this is one of the things and like i've kind of i said on the first time i was on this one of the things that made me politically active was seeing just the outward blatant corruption of Hillary Clinton, mm -hmm. and I, we have the same if same thing, you know, if not possibly worse with Joe Biden, right? So Hillary Clinton had her own charitable foundation that she started when she was Secretary of State and was obviously using, I mean, just blatantly, obviously using it to funnel money, right? from Absolutely. foreign countries into her and it was like if you can look at what she did and not go oh that's pay for play oh that's bad you know but i'll slap a d next to my name and, and run on the platform of oh hey just give me all your money because that's that's in my opinion it, it's utterly ridiculous that a political party would pick her um and it shows that politics have been so dumbed down that people People are always like, you know, ah, oh, Trump is such a bad person. He's a bad. Why would you want him in there? He just he's boorish, and he's like, it's like, okay, um, I came, I, we, you know, the whole we came, we saw he died. That was a uh, that, that's that's good. That's good in your brain. But now, where it comes to Biden, is this is a guy who has quotes saying. I, you know, he was, he was pro-segregation, you know, and he has quotes where he says things like, I don't want um, desegregation because, you know, he, in his words, he said he did not want his children to grow up in a racial jungle. <laughs> and this is who we're being given, you know, you know, we're told Trump is a racist, but before Trump was in office, you know, he was getting awards for his anti-racism, right? Yeah. You know, and then we also get told, oh, Trump's a crony, Trump's using the office to enrich himself. And, but then you see, like, oh, he's actually lost money, his business ventures have gone down, he's not taking a paycheck, his total net worth has gone down, he hasn't actually done something, because I'm sure if they, if they actually, if he actually had done something mm -hmm. to enrich mm -hmm. himself, then... Um, he, it would have been in news. It would have been mainstream news. Somebody would have found it. They were on him like a hawk. 
which the them on him like a hawk isn't the bad thing, right? Yeah. But it's when you look at Joe Biden and it's just like I was reading these deep dives and it's just been blatantly obvious about how his financial wealth has gone up because of because of sh- shady politics, right? Well, yeah, I mean, everybody's wealth in politics, but Joe Biden especially. I, I, yeah, I, I mean, same with like Nancy Pelosi and all this kind of stuff. But wh- one of the things that, that we, that you know, we went through is we had a presidential impeachment, which is a big deal. And this, they mm-hmm. essentially impeached Trump for asking the Ukrainians a question about Joe Biden's son and their dealings and how Joe Biden on video admitted that he went in and forced them to fire a guy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's not a question of if Joe Biden forced him to fire a guy. He he was, he was getting them to fire a guy looking into the business, the guy investigating his son, his son's company. And then, you know, and then there's the whole thing around, Oh, well, you know, why did his son have that job? His son has no qualifications. His son sniffing it, coke? You know, and all this stuff. Oh, well, one of the great as a Miami drug dealer. Joe Biden said about his, I never talked to my son about his business dealings. And then when his son is like raking in billion dollars, literally billions of dollars of investments from Chinese investment firms into a thing that he owns, mm-hmm. you know, and you go, okay, what is that? Like, wh- wh- you know, he went with you on Air Force Two. I've never talked to my son. Well, somebody, and it's kind of a funny story how it the cocaine it, house. Um, it got there. But the Washington Post or the New York Post, one of the like older, relatively center, you know, or people call them right wing because they don't suck, you know, just absolutely cover for the left in the same way that most other, like the New York Times does and all that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. They got a copy of one of Hunter Biden's. Um, computer hard drives. Because he apparently turned his uh, waterlogged computer into a repair guy and uh, never retrieved it, so the guy made copy of the of the of the hard drive and was like, oh my god, what is this? And then turned it into good old, you know, Rudolph Giuliani (laughs) and he turned it into the feds. Well, in that, there are emails oh, of the people that were under investigation, the Ukrainians and all this stuff, saying, yeah, thanks for letting us meet your dad. And other things of them going, hey, we really need you right now to talk to your dad. You know, and mm-hmm. the timelines of when this stuff would have happened based on the email signatures from the hard drive, the time and date stamps are exactly when Joe Biden was saying he never talked to his son. Oh, and it boggles my mind. So you have, and while this might not like prove it in a court of law, it, it, it's fairly obvious that Joe that Joe Biden might not have been the one that was outright corrupt and selling influence, but his son was. And you know, if you're a father and you know you know you're already pretty well off, like, and you're a corrupt politician, well, you're going to try and get your your children to be the ones that are benefiting from it, right? And that obviously happened. Like, there's no question of that. But I I just can't understand these people that will, you know, vote for him thinking that he's better than Trump. He is is just a polite, like, he had all of the bad things they say about Trump, Joe Biden, is is worse. (laughs) So, like, I was having a conversation when, you know, I recently, like, got off of Facebook, got back on. Um, one of the persons from people from the cave, um, uh, Shauna, you know who I'm talking about in there? Uh, who, yeah. Goes under Cor- the Coralie. She's lefty. I'm pretty sure she's a lefty. She's voted right? for Biden. Interesting. Well, she posted a meme and it she's was, like, you know, she's been she's posting all this stuff, like these pictures of people from, from our hometown and they're all like redneck country bumpkins. Like all these people are so evil and stupid. And I'm like, if you know, there's stupid people on both sides for every person going, my God, my guns, my Bible. There's somebody screaming, Russia, Russia, Russia. <laughs> you know, every, every, both tribes have their idiots, but like, so let's not sit here and think that that behavior is anywhere in particular, you know, combine, you know, just to the Republicans. Mm-hmm. Right? Because there are plenty of Democrats that do the exact same thing. But then mm-hmm. I, 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 she 
made some post about like you know the grab by the pussy thing and i'm like okay um that's old i'm like so you like well, what about joe biden's you know credible rape allegation credible sexual assault allegation you know i what he has allegations yeah he has allegations the whole Tara Reid thing, there's actual credible proof. You know, she actually remembers what happens and she filed complaints. And then the place that the complaints were, um, he, you know, he, he refuses to let people get into those records. And he says, oh, just look at these other records that the people who hold those records go, yeah, no, none of that would have been in here. Where those complaints would have made, been made would have been internal. That would have been a great debate question. <laughs> yeah, but I mean... Like, let's be real, you know, Donald Trump is, is trying to win the suburban housewife. He's not going to want to bring up sexual assault, anything, because he's just, he's Donald J. Trump. Like, he, he's screwed porn stars, paid them to shut up. He's, he, is, he is what he is. <laughs> right. You know, the dude ain't perfect. So bring him like that. So honestly, it's probably a sigh of relief for him because now, you know, I don't know if you've noticed, but all discussions of sexual assault... On have have just gone away from the campaign trail, which up until that point was still a huge focal point of the anti-Trump rhetoric. Mm. But Joe Biden mm. is the culmination of everything that they accuse Trump of being. And now, while like I definitely could understand people not wanting to vote for Trump, especially if you're not politically aligned that way and you don't really pay attention to the culture war. Even though I think I think the culture war right now is more important than anything, including um, COVID stimulus, um, because the typical American values are getting lost um, right now. Free <laughs> the ideas of free speech, where you know we're letting social media censor us and all this kind of stuff, and that was even more. The New York Post, um, like Facebook and Twitter, came out and said, "Yeah, we're not letting you even message links to this to other people." They were blocking people's messages to try and share this information. That's insane, especially when it's political information. And they even said, like, hey, while well, we, well, this is eligible to be fact-checked and we so far haven't found anything bad or wrong in it, we're, <clears throat> we're going to wait um, and not let you see it. So fa that's what Facebook said. But the guy that, that is in charge of this at Facebook is a guy that was a part of multiple, you know, liberal political action committee chairman things, right? Like he was in charge of liberal politics to try and win the Senate and worked for Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. And this guy is using the, this guy, a, effectively a government player, he's in politics, is using the power of social media to silence you. And, and limit, so that is, in my opinion, while it's not technically the government, it, it is a violation of the First Amendment. Mm -hmm. it, it's subversion of the First Amendment. And I, it's just so funny when you look at these, these people who are normally like just these absolute ardent like free speech, free speech are now like, well, it's a private company. Mm -hmm. It's like... Like, okay, whatever. I feel like the, le the left and the liberals are these type of people that are like, well, if you want your capitalism, we're going to ruin it with monopolies and, and censorship. Like, what? But then it comes down to, I think Joe Biden did something. He started releasing his, his um, cabinet position nominees effectively, right? And it is just the same old, same old neoliberal you know, business as usual type people. And I, you know, there's a lot to be said on that. I think he's probably doing it now just to kind of like calm the fears of your typical neoliberal voter um, to make sure that he's not about to put in the far, the, the radicals, the, the socialists and stuff like that to prove Trump even more wrong. Um, because Trump has kind of tried to mount this really ineffective, oh, Joe Biden's a far-right, you know, he's a radical socialist. Um, and while I am afraid of radical socialism, and I think Joe Biden being, you know, the basically puppet that he is, it could has the ability to lean into giving way to people like that. 
I've, I also know that if Wall Street's backing a candidate, they're they're not going to let that candidate do something stupid that goes against their interests. So you're going to get these these stereotypical, and it's a lot of people that would do things under the Obama administration, like you know the people that prevented us from classifying China as a currency manipulator to allow investment firms to continue to do work in China. Mm-hmm. It's people that understood that were their entire job was to go from working for the government when sanctions were passed to working for investment firms to help teach them how to get around sanctions. Right? Like that's it. And that's this whole cabinet thing. And I think be, there's two things that this could possibly happen. It, it could convince, you know, a lot of people that are like, you know, that have just been like, Oh my God, enough, enough with all the Trump thing, having everything from the media, shoving it down their throats and not paying attention, you know, and to wanting to go back to not paying attention and be like, oh, no, this this is going to be fine, fine, fine. But Joe Biden still needs the progressive people to um, to win the election. You know, even if, because I, like, you know, polling has him up all of this amount, but polling had Hillary Clinton up, and then when the... the yeah, don't look the at the polls. Standard, what's that? Yeah, the, don't look at the polls. Well, I mean, the Bernie Sanders people didn't come out to support her. And I think that because of stuff like this, you know, he's he's put out his, you know, stereotypical neoliberal um, BS uh, cabinet member, cabinet selection, all this stuff. There's there's no Elizabeth Warren as the Treasury Secretary, which is what a lot of the 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 actual left. So, I mean, there's there's the liberal there's the neoliberals and then there's the left. Right. That make up the Democratic Party. Well, so I think what you're going to see this in Elizabeth of Warren. What's that? What is Elizabeth Warren? She is more of like a lefty. She's a, she's a weird mix of both left and neoliberal. Nah, I don't think she's a neo. I think she's basically someone who's pretending to be neoliberal. Because she's just... I think she's someone else. that's neoliberal but pretending to be on the left. She was a Republican at one point. Beautiful. You know, that's good old great. Pocahontas, right? But, um, you know, and that's, that's, that's a whole other thing. But, you know, I, I think that this is going to cause a lot of people that were sitting there, you know, because the narrative on the left has been, you know, not, and I'm not talking like the liberals, I'm talking about the left left. It has been, oh, well, we'll push him once he gets into office. We'll push him once he gets into the office further to the left. I mean, even then, did you see the Project Veritas thing that got released today? Nah. Um, so they, they got interviews with a, um, basically one of the, like a dem a Democrat guy that's also in basically in charge of all those, all of the crazy protests in, um, in the Denver area. And basically what he was saying, uh, it's crazy is that, oh, we're going to riot even harder when Joe Biden was elected, because if he doesn't give us what we want legislatively, we're just going to constantly riot. And that's the people that plan and organize and maintain all of these riots that people are blaming on Trump right now. They're going, you know, oh, we're just going to make it worse. But what it, but so you have the left that are going, oh, well, we're going to riot even harder, even, you know, if Trump is going on, uh, Trump loses. So all these people that are like, if you just vote for Biden, these people will stop. Like, no. They're they're gonna riot even harder because they Trump doesn't doesn't you know negotiate with terrorists. They think that they can get Biden to negotiate with the terrorists, and if he does start doing it, the chances of the Democrats getting reelected after that are nil. If, if they do or they don't, their chances of getting reelected after it are gone. In my opinion, right? Be because you have they need their left wing base. To vote mm-hmm. for them to win, and they have already started to lose. And I 100% think that they will continue to lose the union voters because people that they've put on are are pro like selling shit to China, neoliberal economics. You know, a lot of people will shit on Trump, going, "Oh, well, he's a 
he abandoned populism for a bunch of stereotypical Republican stuff. I'm like, yeah, but he still kept the trade war with China. Okay, you can't sit there and say, you know, this was I was watching the rising and the, these those dudes on the hill, like, well, Trump has abandoned populism for typical republicanism, and it's like trade war with China. Like, you still have Republican senators from fucking Wisconsin going there and saying, you know, like, let's just let's just buy cheap shit from Asia. Why not? You know, that's your stereotype. And same with Mike Lee from Utah. That's your stereotypical. Um, Republican, and I think Trump is still going. No, we need to protect trade. We need to protect trade. We need to protect protect trade. And there was tariffs coming and going. Yeah, I mean, but you know, that's the thing, right? To me, everyone's like, "Well, the economy is beginning to suffer because of it," and then it turns out, mm, no, it wasn't. But certain people were suffering because they, you know, oh, soy farmers were, you know, their trade, their soy trade with China got got, you know, the profits got jacked up. It's like, okay, start farming something else. You know, if the rest of the economy is doing better and you're getting thousands upon th hundreds of thousands of manufacturing jobs coming back because it's better to make shit here or you pass trade deals like in the um, the the Canada, American Canada, you know, the, the come zone um, trade deal. Basically, he, he said in there, Trump had written that if you if you don't have a certain percentage of your workers making fifteen dollars an hour or more you get tariffed effectively, right? Provisions to try tariffs, and force tariffs on the ground. Yeah, trying to ah. force Canada ah. and Mexico to pay their people ah. better. Not that Canada really is a problem, but Mexico is. And that's really the biggest problem is we can't have, you know, our companies go and make shit in China or Mexico and stuff like that where they pay their people nothing because that's just not fair to the American worker. Yep. Um, and it, it, it does, it's not fair economic policy for America, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, how can we compete if in America we pay our skilled workers 30 bucks an hour and they pay their skilled workers 30 cents an hour? You know, it just doesn't work. So even in all this stuff like his trade deals, his immigration, all of his stuff was very populism, not republicanism. So I, I find it funny when you get these critiques of Trump that are saying, well, he abandoned you for typical Republicanism. Like, no, if he went from, you know, 70-30 to 60-40, I understand it, or even 50-50. But the important things that people cared about, he was on. He didn't, he never was like an outright pop, you know, full-on populist. He was a, dude, trade and immigration is killing us. Let's do something about it. China, immigrants, the, the illegals. The aliens. You know, Mexico's I can't wait. Not sending our best. If Trump gets a second term, I really can't wait because if... he's going to be like Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson, his second term went ham on people. Uh, oh, I think he's going to. I think one of the things that he was, he's been, he and everybody kind of shits on him because in the very beginning, he basically couldn't fire people, and he couldn't bring on the people that he wanted to do to fill certain positions because oh, of Russia. Right. Because the whole Russian collusion thing, and people are like, "Oh, that's bullshit." It's like, no, he was forced to keep on, like, keep on staffers that he didn't like that kept leaking shit about him. Whereas, anytime any previous president came in, they basically just cleaned house. Mm -hmm. Obama got rid of anybody that that worked for Bush that was like a Bush appointee. You know, got you know fired and replaced everybody except for the fucking maids, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and Trump can do the same thing. Hey, so, uh, but it still comes down just, to, you know, I have a feeling if Biden wins, we're we're going to get Trump 2.0 in the next go round. But then it's it's really going to come down to, are the Republicans actually going to be, you know, follow through with the same type of, you know, Republican populism that Trump is doing, you know, getting better trade deals, giving in a little, you know, a little bit more to the unions. Get, trying to you know talk with them, being like, hey, well, I might not necessarily o overly try and push the companies to give you pensions and healthcare and shit. I'm gonna make it so that they don't go out of business. You know what I mean? I feel you. Uh, any last thoughts on on all this? On Hunter Biden? On Biden? I I think he he's setting himself up to lose. We, we you still have absolute tons of people that haven't cast their votes yet, and so now. He typically the nominations for cabinet members um, come later on, and or you know, 
I, and I think by him giving it as early now, he has the high possibility of losing any tradesman union people or and any um, buddy on his progressive side that might have, you know, voted for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's paying attention. You'll you'll get a good chunk of people because of his cabinet, his potential cabinet positions, uh, especially the Treasury Secretary people. Um, that that are gonna just. You know, it, it's going to piss people off because it's going to completely disrupt the narrative of, of oh, we can push him further to the left. Well, if his cabinet position members are not are not already starting kind of left, they're just more, you know, more of the same Obama era stuff, then nothing's going to change. And I, I think that has the high, high possibility of taking away support from him. And I, I think this whole thing with his son is was intentionally done now to act as an October surprise. But it's just it's just kind of shameful because the you know politicians keep getting away with criminal shit and never having you never bearing the brunt of the responsibility for it. And that's that that's so negligible in my opinion that it's ridiculous. Ne- negligent as far as, you know, I don't I don't care if you know, they say like, oh, let's not go after people after they've gotten out of office because, you know, we don't want to set the president where we go after our political people. It's like, if they were doing something illegal, then arrest them. If they weren't doing something illegal, then it won't have mattered. Mm-hmm. So, but that's just the, are you still there? All righty. Well, I'll probably try to end here. And record it and upload it and see how it turns out, alright? Gotcha. Man, you just, like, sit there and, like, make me talk the whole time. Yeah. Well, I mean, because I feel like it, on my side it'll be okay, but uh, let me just fucking... How in the f- fucking... No, I mean, I just didn't want this to be, like, a, you know, angry white dude monologues the whole time t- deal. You're good, boo. You're good. Okay, good.